Hello, beautiful souls. Uh, welcome back. Thank you so much again for checking out my channel, The Illuminated Castle. I am just so honored to share my journey and share the journey of others because we are all on the same path. Uh, we're all on the same journey to find the greatest expression of who we are. And as you can see, I have a wonderful guest here today, Raylene Vining, and she is an artist. And I'm so excited to share and to hear more about the art that you create, Raylene. And uh, Raylene has been a professional artist for more than 10 years. She started painting in watercolor 20 years ago, and she has retired from her corporate roles about two years ago to pursue that art full time. And she started doing commissions of pet portraits as well as children, uh, but her art has evolved into more abstract and intuitive paintings. So that is what you have been working on now. And that's really beautiful. We're going to talk a lot about that. So Raylene had her awakening in early 2020, shortly after the pandemic and the lockdowns began. And that journey really helped you find that purest joy, which is intuitive painting. I'm getting the goosebumps. <laughs> so we're going to talk a little bit about intuitive painting coming up. Um, and we're going to share a little bit about, you know, some of your art and how we can find it. And we're just so excited. Like, I'm just so excited to have you on. Thank you, Raylene. So first to start, tell us about when you knew in your heart of heart that you were in fact a true artist. Can you talk about that? Sure, sure. Well, first of all, I want to thank you so much for having me on. I so enjoy your channel and I'm so honored just to be here with you. So thank you. I'm I'm really excited to be here and share my story and uh, my experiences with you and your guests or, or your uh, audience on your channel. Um, so, um, you know, when I was a child, I, I just had this deep, inherent... Um, it was a call. It was the only thing that I really knew to be true about me and my life is that I was going to be an artist. And here I just had this dumb little green crayon. And I, I don't know, I would just sit down and I would color and I would get into the flow state. And, you know, that smell of crayons or something about that. And, you know, people say, what are you going to be when you grow up? And I'd be, I'm going to be an artist. And it's like, I knew, I knew that was my thing. That was so, so um, just, just from the deepest core. And, um, and, and, you know, as you grow, you know, people tell you, oh, you can't do that. You can just do that as a hobby. <laughs> and so, um, you know, like I kind of thought, oh, I, I bought into that belief that you couldn't really do that. So I did it as my side, um, just my relaxation, you know, I would do crafts and stuff as I got older and, but not really my painting. And um, so it, it started at a very young age, even though I denied it and pushed it down. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Well, that's amazing. I mean, that's, I feel like that's the, the sto a story that a lot of people will understand and relate to, because I'm sure there are a lot of souls out there listening that have something that sparks them inside. And maybe at some point in their lives, they have been told, you know, this, this is not a possibility. And we're really here to let you know that it's, it's a really beautiful time to start engaging with those passions. So in your introduction, we talked about your awakening experience and that happened in 2020. And at the time you were like working in a corporate job and you were kind of doing that nine to five day grind. So can you talk a little bit about your awakening experience uh, for everyone, please? Yes, absolutely. So, um, you know, I went in and I, um, I got a corporate job. I did the whole thing. I was in project management. I worked my way up the corporate ladder, became a, a vice president of project manager for a little company. And, um, you know, and I'd come home at night and I'd paint and, um, you know, and that was all good, but it just, it felt like there was something more, there's something missing. What's missing. Like I just, I tried the religious aspects and um, it just never felt right to me. Um, and so I, I noticed, you know, I, I started to hear more about meditation. 
And I got a little app and I started meditating for 10 minutes every day. And I would just wake up and I would start my day that way. Um, and I mean, I just started, I, I, I didn't really know where it would lead me and what would happen with it. Um, but just for 10 minutes, I had to connect and I, I started to get really addicted to it, um, which is the, the way it should be. Um, and it started to become a lifestyle. Um, when I had my awakening, I remember that um, COVID was full, full, um, well, well, it was just getting started and we were in lockdown for, you know, the first few months. And so I had a lot more time then to just stay at home and to meditate. And, you know, it was really scary. Those first few months, I feel like we, nobody really knew what was happening. Um, I know I personally felt pretty afraid. And, um, you know, it was kind of in that time that I actually did have my awakening. My, um, I, I had a really profound experience and I had this experience where I actually saw the matrix all around me and I realized that nothing was real. And I was like, I, I was scared. <laughs> I, I was like, this is really cool. And this is really kind of like, what does this mean? This is, this is life changing because now I have seen and experienced and felt something that I've never experienced before. And um, that was kind of the beginning for me then. Then I, you know, obviously I went through, I think what most of us do is like we're seeking out and trying to understand that experience but, and simultaneously continue to have more of them. And so I would have those experiences for me through, you know, meditation and, um, and, and that's when it would really happen. And then I obviously, I educated myself. I, I went out and I bought books and I, you know, would listen to different different teachers just to try and understand what was happening. But that was the beginning for me. And so a lot's happened in the last uh, three years or so. That's so beautiful. I love that. I love that you're speaking so much about how important it is to uh, connect, you know, into that place of silence, you know, and just to reconnect. And that is where there are so many gifts waiting, you know, to be revealed to us. And it's interesting you spoke about you know, when you saw this idea of this matrix, you know, that, you know, you became aware of, I guess, I believe in a lot of the Hindi, they call it like the Maya, the illusion, you know, and, and that we are sort of a part of a, a great system. And there is a lot of magic and beautiful potential in this, in this sort of system when we connect into it. So that's beautiful that you had that opportunity to connect in with mm -hmm. it. Um, so that's beautiful. Okay, now, so we've talked a little bit about that. I am curious. So how did that meditation experience sort of translate? You became a seeker. And then at what point during the seeking did you feel called into back into your art? Can you talk about that? Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a great question. So so I had um, maybe about 20 years ago, um, you know, I had gone through um, a, a big transition in my life. And I was trying to get back to, you know, kind of my whole foundation was shaken. And I needed to figure out, you know, kind of who and what and where um, I was again. And, and in that experience, you know, I kind of went back to like, okay, as a child, I loved anything creative. Um, and so I, I just did a little Google search and a um, watercolor class that was near my house popped up and it was really affordable. It was like kind of everything, just it checked every box. It was like every Tuesday night and it was all the things. So I started to do that. And, um, you know, I got, I, I became, uh, experienced in watercolor. I think, you can, I don't think you can ever really be trained <laughs> or, um, but you know, you start to have more and more experiences with watercolor and learn how um, the medium works. And so I did, um, you, you know, so in within that, you start out trying to make perfect little trees or, or whatever you're trying to paint, you know, and, and you're not flowing. And, um, so, you know, it was kind of like, 
bring, when I, when I had that, I, I started to become more classically trained. And then I, even though I don't know that's a thing, but um, it, it's kind of like after my awakening, I went, oh, okay, that thing that's inside of me and that I've been doing and it, I've been learning for the last 10 years or, or 20 years or maybe now 17, something like that. Um, I'm like, oh, okay, that is really significant. I started to kind of tie the events in my life together. I, there's never been a moment where I haven't felt like painting or drawing or something. And, um, you know, so with that awakening, I kind of went into a, um, like, that's what makes me feel best is when I'm in that space is then I, I just, I feel connected again. You're in like a, and I often talk about, you know, when we're connected to our highest and best passions, and we've talked about this as well, you feel like you're in a flow state. And I know I explain flow state as losing track of time because time is an illusion time is a construct so you, when you go in and I know for me when I was in that awakening experience and when I'm passionate I lose track of time I'm in a state of presence so mm -hmm. how how do you get into that flow state before you go into creating your your beautiful art and what does it feel like when you are there those are good questions. So, um, you know, I think that it, in, I, I think, you know, I, 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 you've used a lot of different mediums and watercolor makes me, you know, it, it just is flow because of the water. And, you know, we've all seen artists that are painting and, you know, it kind of just flows, but so that definitely helps, I would say, but, but it doesn't really matter. You know, like I'm looking at the beautiful artwork behind you and, you know, obviously that's a flow state and, and beautiful, but I think that, you know, getting into the flow state, I usually, you know, I, I transitioned from very traditional, like I'm going to paint a portrait and I need it to look exactly like the person or the dog that I'm painting um, into kind of just real abstracts and, and real simplistic, kind of back to the basic, really simplistic types of paintings. And, um, you know, that flow state, it feels like, if I start with like, I want to make this, like I'm going to make this commission for somebody, it's a little bit harder to get into that state. I mean, you know, you you do eventually, but, you know, because you have some of the technical aspects to deal with. Um, but typically what I do is I have no idea what's going to happen. If I just like, it doesn't matter. This is a piece of paper and this is, you know, a nickel's worth of paint. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's a masterpiece or it doesn't matter if, if I'm done, I just toss it in the trash because it doesn't matter. It's okay. It's all good. And I think it's that really that letting go and that just being free. It doesn't matter what the outcome is because it really doesn't. And when you just get, just let it flow and just like, it doesn't matter. I just want to connect. And, and I think that that's key. You know, it's like, I usually just set an intention. I want to connect and just see what flows through me, what my higher self is going to bring. And, you know, it's, I, I come back to it the next morning and I'm, it's on my desk and I'm like, oh, that's really pretty. <laughs> oh, wow. That was really good. I, and like when you're in it, how does it feel? I hardly even notice. I am mostly like just watching, like intuitively knowing like, oh, that I'm using orange. Now I'm going to move to yellow and now some reds and, you know, and just kind of transitioning and watching those colors mix on my paper and you know, that's what you're, what's happening while you're in the flow state. You're just like, wow, that's really pretty. And you come back later, like, oh, that was really pretty. Yeah. So that's a beautiful. And, and like I've titled this, um, this time together for our, for our title for the, this podcast, it's, it's art is creation, having fun. And yeah. so it's just, it's just that surrender into the creative aspect. And that's where that spark of creation is able to express itself through us. Because I, I truly believe that we are all artists. We all have those aspects. And it's just about finding the medium 
that you connect with. And that's a process in itself. That's a journey, right? Like when you realized you were an artist, you know, you never could have thought that by that one watercolor uh, course that you took would propel you into where you are now. Like you have just, yeah, I've watched some of the little videos that you put together on Facebook and they're, they're, they're meditative. Like when I, when I watch them, I really lose myself. And that's what you, that's the purpose is you lose yourself. And I feel, I feel at healing presence as well, Raylene, like when I see your art and when I watch your videos and I I feel that connection um, to that beautiful frequency. So it's just, it's, it's just pure magic. I, yeah, I'm really grateful and and honored to to hear about your story and just know that you have made this decision to come back to who you truly, truly are, this beautiful artist, this soul of an artist. So, um, so we talked a little bit about going into that place. And I want to talk about like, I'm just super curious, because you have this, the art is healing. And we talk about, uh, sort of the the color uh color is very healing and i sense that you were drawn to specific hues of colors so can you talk about what it is about these colors that kind of pull you into that place of of joy and creation because there are certain colors i do find that are specific for your art can you talk about that Yeah, yeah, I can. You know, I, it's really interesting because a lot of artists, uh, my style is really bright and colorful and, you know, really, you know, like not toned down. I struggle with anything toned down, to be honest with you. Um, And there's just something about the, um, I'm always drawn to color palettes that are really bright, really playful, um, really energizing. And, um, you know, I, um, it's, it's, it's interesting because I've just always had this sense for what's going to move together. And even if it, you know, the, the colors and, and how they're going to move and, and what that evokes in you. And so, so as I see those colors, I am, I'm kind of in this meditative flow state, but also with like the intention of, you know, bringing that healing. I think one of the things that maybe we didn't talk about was that um, one time during meditation, this was some time ago, pretty, a um, couple of years ago, and I was, I was getting really you know, more and more connected, more and more doing that inner work and that, that inner, inner, you know, all that healing that we have to do. I mean, certainly not done, but you know, we you all go, we all go through that process of, you know, that dark, dark night of the soul and, you know, kind of coming through that and, you know, that the brightness of the colors really were kind of the, um, the silver lining, if you will, for me, as I was going through that, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, I was, I was going through that healing process, but the, the output of that were these beautiful, you know, beautiful paintings. And they just felt more and more vibrant and the more vibrant they were, the more I felt like that just, that just really is me expressing my soul on, you know, paper. And I, you know, when I was going through that, I feel like as you heal, you also get this little gift that goes with that. That's what I found anyway, is that the the more I heal, the more little gifts I get and the more intuition that comes to me and the more ideas. And I have this feeling, I I always had this feeling that um, my artwork would be kind of this see it, heal it kind of thing. So when you would see it, it would help to heal you and heal the world. And, you know, really, I kind of just focused on me at the time because, you know, we've got to heal ourselves. And then once we get healed, we can kind of overflow that into the world. And so initially, you know, I just like, as I was painting, I was healing as well. And 
um, you know, I kind of, I had had this little art career where I was doing, I was working, but I was also doing a lot of, like you said, pet portraits and portraits of children. And those are a lot of fun. I mean, I love to paint somebody's dog and capture the essence and, and they're always so happy to get the results. Like it's just, it's the, the greatest joy. They cry and, you know, you know, you've really like given them a beautiful gift and, um, and I love that. I, I do love that because it's just so deeply personal. And um, yeah, it, it gives me chills. So just I want to pop on. So you are available then if somebody is interested. In, in yes, a yes. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it, that is a really I love that. That's that's just so sweet because pets and, and you know, are such a beautiful part of our lives and they're so healing. But anyway, mm -hmm. yeah, so very healing. So very healing. And um yeah. So, you know, it's like this, this see it and heal it. So I think that, you know, as I paint, I really, um, I kind of almost forget what I'm doing. And I start thinking about the love and injecting it with love. And I think that my love and passion for the process, just, it just seems to naturally just flow out of me into the artwork and into the process Wow. And going into that, how it naturally flows out of you. So you have, in fact, had a past life regression and it has come forward. So can you talk a little bit about your experience of, of knowing in previous incarnations that you have, in fact, been an artist? Yes, yes. So um, I, I did have a past life regression. I, I went into it, you know, a little like Oh, you know, cause I, I didn't, I, I didn't fully understand it at that point. So I was curious, but, you know, really unsure. And, um, I was told that I have had many lifetimes as an artist. And so I thought, oh, okay, that makes a lot of sense. It really does. Mm -hmm. You know, when you, when you hear something that's so true about your soul and then that's revealed and then that resonance that you have within you, you go, Oh yeah, that's true. If somebody had told me I was a, a, a you know, a craftsman, some other type of blacksmith, I'd be like, I don't really think I was. <laughs> but there, that artist just really like, yes, I absolutely was. Um, and when I'm painting, I often connect with that other side of me. And I, like I said, I often when I'm painting, I don't really know what I'm painting. I don't really have an idea. I mean, I know I can, I'm painting circles. I know I'm painting circles. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying like what that ends up creating. Like, I feel like I'm doing the process, but I have no control over what the outcome will be. And it's within that work that this magic comes through me and it is absolutely, you know, that those past lives. And I'm definitely tapping in and channeling that. And, and it's always a surprise. It's a surprise for me. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And I want to let everyone know that I will be including all of the links uh, for you to be able to see Raylene's art because it truly is so healing and I just sense such a strong connection uh, to that joy, that frequency of love. So it's so, so beautiful. Um, I want to ask you also just about the stones, because that is a huge aspect of the intuitive painting. And, and I know and I see how drawn you are to it. So have you gone inward and really like examined and, and asked what is it about these painting of the stones that really pulls you into that intuitive because that to me is it seems to be a spot so for those who probably saw in the front Raylene has this magical ability to create these stone the stone painting art and it's so pure, pretty can you talk about that yes yes so it's really interesting I when I first started painting rocks and stones were easily the hardest thing ever I thought I, I was like, if I was doing a landscape, I want to do a landscape without rocks. I'll do trees, I'll do flowers, I'll do lakes, I'll do mountains, I'll do skies, but no rocks. I just like rocks seemed impossible. I, I, and, and then I, my, my art teacher said, oh no, rocks are the easiest thing in the world. Let's paint rocks. We're going to just paint rocks. And I, I was like, oh. and I did. And it was 
amazing. One of the one of the most beautiful. I unfortunately sold that painting. Um, and it was the first time I had done rocks. And it was basically kind of like little rocks and a, a cliff kind of thing with a lighthouse on top and the ocean. So I got to do some of the elements that I love. But the whole cliff was rocks. And from that moment on, I was like, that was the most, that was addictive painting rocks. Because rocks, they're they're never wrong. You can't be wrong. There's you're never wrong. A rock is never wrong. You can't paint a rock wrong. It's not possible. I didn't really understand that because you can't. You can't do it wrong. It's never wrong. I love rock that. Is- I love that, Raylene. I love that you your what appeared to be your greatest fear in expressing your art has now become your greatest passion. <laughs> <laughs> I know, isn't that funny how that works? It's beautiful. It really shows us all how important it is to move towards our fears because that is where the greatest gifts lie. You know, that you had, you know, you absolutely love painting all these other, you know, pets and people. However, when you moved into this, what you perceived as a fear and you went into it and you really got there, you realized that it was pure joy. I just think that's beautiful. (laughs) It really was. And, you know, I started to paint like, um, well, I started to do more landscapes just because that's what I was comfortable with. But I started adding more rocks and having a lot of fun and finding that I love the rocks. Like, like in the art world, nobody loves the rocks. You know? I wonder if you were a rock at some point, right? As in, as an embodied consciousness, because our, our souls are eternal and our consciousness incarnates. I wonder if you spent time as a rock. I mean, I definitely spent time as a rock. And I feel like I, I would go outside. I never cared about rocks before I didn't I I, like rocks like uh, uh, rocks I never was into rocks now I I am so into that I go outside and we I pick up rocks rocks will call to me but I feel like that you know we have a mutual friend Danielle Lipton and we both love her to death and she talks a lot about liberating those and at one point she talked about that and it just a light went on with me and I maybe it wasn't Daniel but somebody and I felt like yes there is a certain amount of liberation of souls in stones and in rocks and I have felt really called and I occasionally will be walking or out in nature and I see something and A, I stamp a little picture of it so I can paint it because I feel in giving it that love and that attention that, you know, that's part of the freeing of that entity or being or or whatever in that rock. So I know it's a little woo-woo and a little crazy, but I absolutely there's just something about the stones that just draw me to them and I feel almost like and especially with the crystals that you know you I kind of have a relationship almost with certain ones and you know kind of that deeper like there is there is a connection there and and maybe there's a part of me in that and yeah so it's undeniable (laughs) Raylene I'm I'm just so, I love, 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 love listening to your passion. And just this conversation is just amazing. And I'm so honored and happy and grateful that you came on to share about yourself and your journey, because this really is the time. This is the time where, you know, we're really being called to step forward into who we truly are. And so to be able to bring you on today is just so meaningful and Um, Yeah, I did, in fact, create this. And it was interesting because I did go into a meditative channeling space. And the same idea, I surrendered, I had no idea really what I was doing. And when I came out of it, I sort of looked at it. And, and I realized that it was this connection to that sacral chakra to that place of creation and that expression, right, the colors and everything. So I just yeah, thank you for the inspiration and and for sharing a little bit about, you know, who you are as an artist and as a soul and the process of surrendering to that incredible divine force of of love, unconditional love. And I just wish you, yeah, all the best and definitely 
anyone who's interested in checking out Raylene's art, all of the links will be below for you. And it's just, it's beautiful, beautiful. I really appreciate you stepping into your power and to who you fully are, because that's what we're here to do. That's what we're here to do. So thank you again, everyone, for taking the time to listen. I do hope you received something from this offering. Uh, Raylene and I feel so honored to be able to share, you know, more of who we are and, and, and the gifts. And Raylene, just thank you again so much for coming on. And thank you so much, everyone, for taking the time to watch, uh, subscribe. And maybe just in closing, if you know someone, if you are watching this and you know someone who is that true artist in their heart of hearts, I mean, which we all are, but someone who you know is just connected but hasn't explored that in some time, we would ask, right, Raylene, that you go ahead and share share this video with them because we want to spark that creative um, energy that lives in each of us. So thank you so much. Sending so much love to everyone. Thank you again for watching.